So I wasn't planning on uploading another video today, but after seeing the recent breaking news from Adrian Wojnarowski on the trade that just broke regarding the Memphis Grizzlies and the New Orleans Pelicans, I thought this was important enough to cover because it actually impacts the Chicago Bulls more than you think, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now, let me quickly cover the details of this trade, which are highlighted in this tweet from Adrian Wojnarowski. Memphis is sending Jonas Valanciunas, who was actually a very solid player for them this season, and helping them get to the playoffs, so I was a little surprised to see him included in a trade. They'll also be sending this year's number 17 pick and number 51 pick to New Orleans for Steven Adams, Eric Bledsoe, this year's number 10 pick, number 40, and a top 10 protected pick in 2022, which will be from the Lakers. So an interesting trade. I mean, if you look at this trade straight up, not factoring all the salary cap maneuvering that is being done by the Pelicans, you would think that the Grizzlies have won this trade, given the fact that they're really getting a solid big man, Steven, Steven Adams, although I would argue Valanchunas, at least last season, looked a bit better. They're taking on a bad contract in Eric Bledsoe, but they are getting two first round picks, one of which is the number 10 pick in this year's draft, and a first round pick in next year's draft, even though yes, that is protected and you're really just giving up Valanchunas as the number 17 pick because really the 51st pick is likely not going to be that impactful. So on the surface, this looks like a pretty good trade for the Grizzlies, which don't get me wrong, it still is, but the Pelicans are doing this more for salary cap creation than the actual value they're getting in return for this trade. They get off of Bledsoe's bad contract, Steven Adams, although he was making close to $30 million this past season, which is insane, but he did sign an extension for much less for two years at $17 million a year, but still a lot of money for a guy like Steven Adams. So you dump Bledsoe's salary and Adams' salary, and instead of keeping your number 10 pick, which is a lottery pick and will require a higher salary paid to a rookie, you now exchange that for the number 17 pick, which will be a lower rookie scale contract. Now, why would the Pelicans do all this? Why would they look to create salary cap room for going into free agency? Well, by the Pelicans offering Brandon Ingram a max contract coming off his all-star season the year prior, and they will, of course, undoubtedly have to pay Zion Williamson a hefty extension for his rookie contract in order to lock him up and have him remain on the team. Those contracts alone, along with the contracts of Adams and Bledsoe, which they just traded for, really constrains them for other players, namely their point guard and restricted free agent in Lonzo Ball, who will be on a lot of teams interest list including the Chicago Bulls. The other reason the Pelicans could free up the salary cap space is perhaps they're looking to make a push for Kyle Lowry and bringing him in as a veteran point guard to mentor and lead this young team who really struggled to find any semblance of consistency this past season despite having some quality young talent. It kind of reminds you of the Chicago Bulls actually. Now the Bulls themselves are in a bit of a bind when it comes to their salary cap, albeit having a good amount of salary cap over some other teams. In order for them to actually make a strong and enticing enough of an offer to to a guy like Lonzo Ball, enough to where it would be too much for the Pelicans to match, the Bulls would likely have to offer him around $20 million a year, if not more, which if the Bulls did, they would really be giving up most of their available salary cap space this offseason to Lonzo Ball and they would likely have to waive or trade Tomas Sadoransky and assign and trade of Lowry Markkinen or let him walk just in order to be able to free up the cap space to do so. Now, I've said it numerous times on this channel, but I think anything over $20 million a year for Lonzo Ball is an overpay, even if his skill set does fit a need for the Bulls. And by paying him that much, you really hamstring your cap flexibility going forward for a guy, in my opinion, yes, he has improved, but still a bit of a question mark when it comes to his consistency and every Every team he's been on hasn't been that great when it comes to winning thus far in his career, even when there has been talent on that team. So for me, I still think the player that makes the most sense for the Bulls is Kyle Lowry on a shorter term deal to bring in veteran leadership, experience and mentorship for a guy like Kobe White and even some of the younger players who can help position Kobe White to be that point guard for the future for the Bulls once Lowry heads off into the sunset and retires. By bringing in Lonzo Ball, although yes, a much better fit long term in terms of a long term option, you're essentially giving up on Kobe White and you will stunt his growth and development 
compliment, which in my view is a mistake given he's only going into his third season in the league. Not saying that Kobe is going to be a star in the league by any means, but he still could be a very, very impactful player in the NBA. And for this team, he could be an impactful player with the right mentorship and development. And with Lonzo Ball, you're stunting that development, whereas Kyle Lowry, you're accelerating that development. Not only that, but Lowry fast tracks your timeline, which the Bulls already signaled that they would be doing by trading for Vucevic at the deadline this past season. Now, I know I rambled on there a bit because you're probably wondering, well, how does this trade, the one that the Pelicans just made, how does it impact the Bulls more than we think? Well, outside of freeing up the cap space for the Pelicans, which could signal they're looking to match any offer sheet that Lonzo Ball receives, or that it could mean they're freeing up that space to give them flexibility to go after someone like Kyle Lowry in the event they're actually not looking to match Lonzo, which again, both of these moves, whether freeing up cap space for Lonzo or Kyle Lowry, those would impact the Bulls as those are both potential free agent options for them this offseason. But more importantly, I think a trade like this signals that it's game on for these teams that had the talent this past season, but disappointed in not making the playoffs or the overall talent didn't just really fit well together and thus will be needing to make significant moves this offseason as a result. So teams like the Pelicans, the Kings, Pacers, the Raptors, and yes, our Chicago Bulls. It signals that the Pelicans making this first aggressive move that these other teams are going to need to follow suit and do it soon in order to position themselves when going into free agency when it opens on August 2nd. And because we know that this front office likes being aggressive in their approach and doesn't want to settle for mediocrity at least that's what they've said anyway i have a sense they're going to view this move by the pelicans as a game on transaction and will soon be making some swift moves of their own to ensure they're doing what they can to make the necessary adjustments to set this team up for success and freeing up the cap space needed to go after some of these available free agents and when i say soon i mean in the next 24 to 48 hours i would not be surprised if the bulls make some sort of trade for salary cap relief prior to the NBA draft. So the reason this move is significant is not only because the Pelicans have a player that the Bulls have been rumored to be linked to for months now and have just freed up salary cap space to potentially keep him, but also it is significant because this signals the beginning of this NBA season and the slew of transactions that will likely topple from here on out over the coming weeks as we head into the NBA draft and the opening of free agency shortly thereafter. Who knows, maybe even by the time this video uploads, the Bulls will have already made a move in response to this trade by the Pelicans. I want to know what you guys think, though. Do you think this trade made by the Pelicans is something or nothing? Do you even think this signals the Pelicans are looking to keep Lonzo at all costs and the Bulls really need to start considering some sort of contingency plans? Let me know in the comments, and as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan, as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.